Hello everyone, Jim Kim here again, and welcome back. And today I have a very special topic for the video, and it's about the human brain. And this video will be uploaded in our intuitiveanatomy.us channel, so please go check it out if you have not yet, okay? So removing the skin of our male model reveals the human brain. And it's quite a sizable organ. And here, just to reorient yourself, there's the human body with the skin on, and without the skin, it occupies the tallest portion of the brain. And, and here are the different gyri of the brain related to the macroanatomy of the brain. But today, we'll be zooming in real deep to talk about the different cells of the human body. And zooming in reveals these complex structures. And these blue structures are the neurons, and there are 100 billions of them forming hundred trillions of connections with each other to allow information processing. And highlighted is the cell body of the neuron, and at the center is the nucleus being highlighted here, con containing the DNA of the neuron, surrounded by rough ER, which makes the proteins, and the rough ER itself is then surrounded by smooth ER. And there are the mitochondria forming the powerhouse of the cell, and the cell body of the neuron itself is surrounded by these dendrites, these processes called dendrites, that receive electrical input. You see, neurons are basically electrical conductors that transmit one electrical potential from one end to the other end. And that one end is the dendrite. And from the dendrite, it then sends information down to the exon of the neuron. And there's only one exon per neuron, and exon forms the other end of the electrical potential travel route. So you can think of neurons as the electrical conductors of the brain, and the exon is surrounded by these rolls of sheath called the myelin sheath. And the myelin sheath allow incredibly fast electrical transmission from one end to the other. So here in this diagram, I'll be demonstrating the concept of saltatory conduction, which is fast, just like that. And here in the yellow circle is the exon hillock that creates the action potential that travels down the exon. And here I'm demonstrating the saltatory conduction, which allows the action potential to just skip and allows incredibly fast electrical transmission from one end of the myelin sheath to the other end. And here is the myelin sheath again, and you can see it comes from the legs of this cell called the oligodendrocyte and it's a supportive glial cell of the central nervous system or your brain and it has multiple legs that extend to multiple different axons to form the myelin sheath and next to oligodendrocytes are the astrocytes and here i'm showing one of the foot processes of astrocytes that connect directly to the neurons to also release neurotransmitters which are chemicals to manipulate the action potential. So for example, here's another drawing diagram to show one of the functions of astrocytes. And here it forms a synapse with one of the exon segments to initiate action potential, just like the exon hillock. But on the other side here, its foot processes kind of expand like the foot processes of podocyte. And I highly recommend watching the kidney video that I uploaded a few months ago if you're not sure what podocytes are, but it basically contributes to formation of the blood-brain barrier, as you can see right here. So there are the blood vessels running through the brain, and then you can see the foot processes of astrocytes forming part of the blood-brain barrier. And these astrocytes all are also responsible for removing any metabolic waste products and also recycling neurotransmitters. And next to the astrocytes are these sea urchin looking cells. And these are your microglia cells being highlighted right here. And these are your resident macrophage cells. So if you recall from any immunology classes that macrophages are responsible for basically detecting any infection or clearing up any debris after uh, some kind of cell injury. Like if you had a stroke, microglia cells come in and remove the necrotic debris. And if there is a, some kind of brain infection like herpes encephalitis or any bacterial infection, so in this example, there's some kind of red bacteria that's in the brain and microglia detects it, 
So there's an exclamation mark, and it releases some kind of cytokines or inflammatory molecules that make the blood-brain barrier a little leaky. And that allows our immune cells, like T cells or B cells, but in this case, T cells, which are immune cells that approach, that interact with macrophages like microglia cells, and these T cells are then activated and release even more cytokines and coordinate even more immune responses to get rid of that pathogen. So microglia cells are important components of the central nervous system's immune system. And last but not least, these are the ependymal cells that basically line the inner linings of the brain cavity. And you can see these little cilia that extend towards the brain to allow circulation, smooth circulation of the cerebrospinal fluid in which the brain basically floats so that the weight of the brain does not compress against the structures like your eyeball or your nose that are below it. So it just floats against the top of your skull. And the cerebrospinal fluids are produced by specialized versions of these ependymal cells that line a special area of the inner lining of the brain cavity called the choroid plexus. And so now let's go look at the exons of the neuron again, specifically what happens at the end, at the terminal end of the exon. And here, is an example of the terminal end of an exon. And here's the myelin sheath that we just discussed, our friend here. And you can see rows of myelin sheath surrounding it to allow saltatory conduction. And inside the exon actually contains the neural microtubules. And it's, it's along these neural microtubules that uh, these proteins called kinesine and dynein that allow transport of a bunch of neurotransmitters or proteins. So here's a drawing diagram and let's call the bottom or the terminal end of the exon as positive end of the exon and let's denote the other end as negative end of the exon towards the cell body and it's the kinesine that are the motor proteins that allow anterograde transport of molecules while it's the dynein that allows retrograde transport of molecules towards back to the cell body where proteins are synthesized and some of the molecules that are transported are proteins, neurotransmitters, and a bunch of other molecules that are crucial for maintaining the integrity of the neuron's health. And these kinesine and dynein use a lot of ATP, the energy unit of the cell. So there's a lot of mitochondria in the axon. And now that we discuss about the motor transport proteins of the exons of the neurons. Now we have to talk about the action potential, how they're generated and how they're maintained along the exons of the neurons. The two key transport channels that we're going to discuss for this video are the voltage-gated potassium and voltage-gated sodium channel. And these channels open up depending on the electric potential across the cell membrane along the exon. So K plus is the potassium and Na plus is the sodium. And both these molecules have a positive charge. And when there's no activity going on in the neuron, it maintains a resting potential where the potassium inside the cell leaves through this resident potassium efflux channel. And this departure of potassium creates a positive charge outside the membrane and a negative charge because it's less positive now inside the membrane. And this membrane potential is usually measured around negative 70 megavolts. Potential is a negative value because outside is positive instead of the inside. And let's maintain this resting membrane potential for a greater length of the exon here. And now let's demonstrate what happens when action potential is generated. So let's say there's an electric potential, a positive inner electric potential traveling along the length of the exon. This causes the voltage-gated sodium. You know, it senses voltage changes. And the voltage-gated sodium channel opens up. And so the sodium ions outside the cell goes now inside the cell because there are way more sodium outside than inside the cell. And this creates a reversal of the membrane charge, where now it's a positive charge inside the cell 
instead of the usual negative charge associated with resting membrane potential. So in action potential, the charges are reversed because the positively charged sodium, Na plus ion, goes inside the cell. And the membrane potential value usually hovers around positive 60 megavolts potential. And the key point here is it's a positive value because inside the cell is now more positive than outside. And now we have to restore this potential back to the resting membrane potential so that the voltage gated sodium channel can detect voltage changes again and open up again. So in order to return the membrane potential back to its negative 70 megavolts potential, first the sodium channel gets inactivated and there's no more influx of sodium from outside to inside the cell. And the second thing that takes place is now the voltage gated potassium channel opens up in addition to the resident potassium channel and both of the potassium channels now promote efflux of potassium ions from inside to the outside the cell and that reverses the charge and puts the membrane potential back to negative 70 megavolts. Just like this, the charges are restored and while the membrane potentials are restoring back to its membrane resting potential, the sodium channels are inactivated leading to what's called a refractory period in which the sodium channel cannot open up again and it needs some time to be ready to open up its channel to allow sodium influx for action potential. And so the action potential then travels down along the length of the exon until it hits the exon terminal where you can see these vesicles, these bubble structures that contain a lot of spheres and these spheres are your neurotransmitters and there are a wide variety of neurotransmitters that we will not be going over today but basically the action potential base promotes the release of all the neurotransmitters from the vesicles from inside to the outside the cell specifically towards the synaptic cleft that is between two neurons so just to demonstrate how neurons communicate with one another here is neuron number one on the top called presynaptic neuron and neuron number two at the bottom called the postsynaptic neuron because in between is the synaptic cleft. And at the synaptic cleft, the neurotransmitters bind to some kind of ligand-gated ion channel, which are basically ion channels that promote influx of ions. And in this case, these are sodium ions, which are cations, so they'll bring in positive charges. And so... The neurotransmitter in this case is an example of excitatory neurotransmitter like glutamate because glutamate binds to its channel and that promotes an influx of sodium and that brings in positive charge and leaves a negative charge outside creating a positive membrane potential and when that positive membrane potential reaches the exon hillock then all the voltage gating sodium channels there will initiate the formation of a new action potential but if it was GABA aminobutyric acid, also known as GABA, then it causes chloride influx, and chloride has a negative charge. So in this case, it'll create a strongly negative potential. So GABA is an example of an inhibitory neurotransmitter because it prevents formation of new action potential. So that's basically it for the microanatomy of the human brain. There is a lot of content because, you know, the brain is one of the most complicated organs, but we have to start small before we understand the macro anatomy of the brain, the different gyri. And as usual, if you enjoyed the content, please leave, like, subscribe, and share with others. And if you haven't already, please go check out the website and some new contents that we posted there recently. And so until next time, which will be part two of this special video, I will see you next time. Have a good day or good night. Bye-bye.